Hello AP Physics parents, Mr. Miliano here. I wanted to make a quick video talking about what the online learning process is going to look like for AP Physics. The reason I'm making this video is because while it's always true that I value communication between teachers and parents, I believe that it's going to be even more essential to the success of online learning in general and in particular for the success of your student. So explaining what this year will look like in more of a broad sense of where I'm coming from sort of philosophically as a teacher, I think can help as we communicate with how your student is doing. The first point I want to mention is, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. We all know that. Um, certainly you um, know this and your own experience with raising your child and all of the people it's taken to get them to where they are right now. And part of that village is school. And like I've said, I value that relationship and that role that I get to play in your student's life to help them learn a little bit and develop a little bit and become a slightly better person than they were when they started the class. That's really my goal. Um, and in turn, I have found that every year I teach, they make me a better person too. It is a mutual relationship. Um, and schools are a vital part in the formation of children and now young adults, right? All of your AP physics students are definitely in the young adult phase, uh, soon to be transitioning to college, career, or whatever may be next for them. Um, and so while that relationship has always been there between parents and teachers, you are the ones who are with your students right now. I do not have the luxury of seeing them. And so um, this partnership that we have is even more important than ever. And I wanna make sure that you understand where we're coming from uh, to get started. So what does learning look like? That's really the question that I want to answer today so that we can see what that looks like then translated to an online format like we have right now. Learning happens in two phases. It happens in an information transfer phase and a sense-making phase. So we have information transfer. That's where you're getting the information that you are going to learn. Uh, books, movies, TV, etc. All of those are ways that you can get information, social media, news, all of those. Uh, but just because you've received information doesn't mean you've learned it yet. Think back to the last time you saw a really great movie, right? Uh, a week later, you might remember who was in it. You might remember a few key plot points, maybe one line that really stood out to you. But you probably couldn't give a scene-by-scene -scene analysis of that movie. You had received the information, but that's different than learning it. Um, if it's a movie you really like, you might go back and rewatch it several times, which will add to your long-term knowledge of that movie and how it plays out. Uh, but it is an intentional effort that you're making to do that. Um, so stage one, definitely you need information to learn, but it is not in and of itself learning. The second part to the learning process is the sense-making phase. That's where you're taking the information you've been given and you're doing activities, you're grappling with that information in your mind so that it can become long-term knowledge. Very roughly, the way our brain works is not that different from a computer. We have our short-term working memory, which can hold about five to seven pieces of information at a time, and then we have our long-term memory. And that's where we're storing things for, well, for the long-term. And the sense-making part of the learning process is developing neural connections with your neurons between the long term and the short term so that you have a strengthened relationship that draws information out of that long term memory and then you can use it in your short term working memory and so that's very roughly how the brain works and it's the sense making part the sense making part of learning that is developing that part of the brain which allows you to store more things in your long term memory and to draw them out of long term memory into a working short short term memory whenever you need that information. Um, so that's roughly the two stages of learning. And that is the framework under which I'm working when I'm designing this online curriculum. If you're honest with yourself, uh, you'd probably say for certain out of the two of these, one of them is a lot harder, right? Getting information isn't super hard. Making sense of it and making it a part of your working mental schema, that's much more challenging. And as a result, um, I think, I want to focus most of my time as the teacher on that second one, the sense-making part. So let's talk about more of that village. Who is helping your child learn? Um, I want to introduce several characters because I uh, am going to work super hard to make sure your students learn, but I cannot do it all on my own. So I'm calling in a few people um, who I respect and who will be able to help out. Number one is Mr. Merrick. This, or Mr. Marek, sorry. He's got a YouTube channel for his AP physics classes that he teaches at another high school. 
Um, he is an AP physics teacher, and he explains things just so well. Everything he says, he says it pretty much exactly how I'd say it, maybe even better in some cases. So for the information transfer part of the learning, he's going to be our primary source. Um, for reading information, we're going to go to Dr. Eugenia Etkina. Her physics textbook, uh, College Physics, will be our primary reading source. It will be accessed through an online e-text. And um, just everything in there is incredible. She has 30 plus years of experience in educating physics, or sorry, researching physics education, in understanding how people learn physics. And all of that wisdom is distilled in this textbook. Um, so it is a wonderful resource, not just for getting the correct information, but it's written in a way that helps people learn it. Um, last but not least, um, we'll be looking at Flipping Physics and John Palmer here. His YouTube channel um, is incredible. It is second to none. And he, what he does really well is he will do a demonstration of some, something in physics, like actually have the equipment on a table, and then he'll use video editing software to overlay the abstractions for the science that we're going to learn on top of that. Um, and so we'll have pictures, for example, of all of arrows uh, representing the direction that forces will be applied. So he'll have a video where he applies some forces, and then on top of that, he overlays the pictures that we are going to draw so we can build that connection between abstract ideas and real-world scenarios. These are incredible resources for the information transfer part of learning. Uh, but you got to keep in mind, just because you receive the information, that doesn't mean you know it yet. Um, so we need to go into the sense-making part. And who is helping your child with the sense-making portion of all of this? Well, that's going to be me. Uh, I am helping out with the sense-making task. That's where I think my time is most valuably spent and where the fact that I have a personal relationship with your student uh, should shine through. So what does this look like in practice? Um, first and foremost, I view my role as the coach of the team and as the cheerleader. Uh, so I'm giving them drills to run so they can build up those ideas in physics and I'm cheering them on as they do it. Um, a good coach doesn't just make things easy for their uh, players, right? They want to push them to their limits so that they become the best versions of themselves. And I will be doing the same. But while I am pushing your students, I will also be encouraging them, um, hopefully helping them take care of themselves, both with their mental health as well as their intellectual health with learning. And I will uh, continue to be on their side the whole time. Um, I will be designing, finding, implementing a lot of sense-making tasks and activities. Um, today that looks like a lab where we had a video recording and we then used a tool to overlay rulers and stopwatches on top of that video recording where we could do a frame-by-frame -frame analysis of this was a ping-pong ball shot out of an air-powered um, air bazooka. And so we'll be doing lots of things like that. Um, tomorrow we'll be looking at card sorts which is a way to take different representations um, and sort them together. So pictures, graphs, words, equations, how do we group all those together? So we'll do lots of tasks like that. And I will be helping your students um, with those tasks, which will be the task that we relate the information we learned into new ideas. I'll be offering a lot of feedback and encouragement. Often this feedback will not be a grade. Uh, research has often has shown that if you give both written feedback and a grade to students, um, often they don't remember the feedback. They just remember the letter grade they got. However, if you give them written feedback absent of a grade, they are much more likely to remember that feedback and then incorporate it into future work. So I'll be giving a lot of informal written or verbal feedback that doesn't come with a grade. But of course, we will be doing quizzes and other activities that do have a grade with them. It's the school system that we work in and um, it does give them some sense of where they're supposed to be. Um, I'll be answering lots of questions. That's my role. Uh, the assignment that they're working on tonight with one of Mr. Mark's videos. Uh, basically, at the end, I ask them to submit what questions they have about the video so that I can answer them the next day. Um, so anything that's unclear, I can help clear up, uh, which goes to this next bullet point, right? Uh, I'm gonna clarify any information that's received. And last but not least, I'm going to give and I'm going to grade assessments. That's going to be a part of my job as well. So this is what I view as my role within the sense-making part of learning. Uh, the next slide I want to talk about, what does the student role within learning look like through both of these 
uh, information transfer tasks and through the sense making tasks. So information transfer, I ask that they read and take notes over the assigned reading or that they watch and take notes over the assigned videos. Um, and while they're doing so, I ask that they interrogate what they're reading or watching. They shouldn't just be passively receiving information, but the whole time they're watching, they need to be asking themselves, why is this true? And if they don't maybe have an answer to that, maybe they need to back up or maybe they need to ask me a clarifying question. Uh, and then I need really, um, I'm going to be encouraging my students to understand this distinction between receiving information and learning information. So if they think that just because they've read it or watched it, they know it, uh, we need, I'm going to help them realize the distinction between the two. Within the sense making part of learning, I'm going to ask that students participate in class activities and relate the information from the information transfer tasks to the activities that we are doing in class. Um, that's got to be an intentional effort on their part to bridge the gap between the information they've learned and the things that we are doing. And I will do my part to point out where those happen, uh, but they need to be putting in that effort themselves too. Uh, they need to ask lots and lots of questions. Learning happens through identifying what you don't know and seeking the answers to those unknowns. Um, they need to seek out feedback from peers and the teacher. Uh, I think it's obvious or more obvious that they should be seeking out feedback from me, uh, although maybe it isn't, right? Sometimes they don't necessarily see me as the feedback giver and the coach. Sometimes they see me as the referee who's giving them points, and we want to shift that mindset a bit. Um, and then the other source of feedback should be their peers. I am a big believer in peer-to-peer -peer learning. Often, the other students in the class can explain something better than I can if your student didn't get it at first. Because unlike me, I've been doing this for a while, the students are all in this together learning this for the first time. So they often are able to re-explain things in words that make sense to each other, sometimes better than I can do. Um, education researchers call this the curse of knowledge. Um, so I definitely encourage your students to tap into that resource of asking each other for help and working with each other. Ask lots of questions. Um, the students need to engage with their homework meaningfully, um, which means you don't just Google for the answers. Uh, oftentimes they'll have multiple attempts to get something right through our online platforms. And so they really shouldn't just be looking for the right answer. I don't care about the right answer. I care about the process to get there. But I need the students to also self-monitor when doing so. I need them to ask lots of questions. If I haven't made that point uh, clear enough yet, Questions are essential. And I don't know why it's being cut off. Uh, let's see if I can fix that real quick. It doesn't look like it. But the very last point here, what it says, is I need the students to become comfortable with making mistakes and being wrong at first. This is not something that Parkway West students are very good at, especially Parkway West students who are taking AP Physics and maybe 300 other AP classes. But it's going to happen. I think this class is worthwhile and valuable, both in the content that the students learn and in the skills, but I also recognize that it is not an easy class. And so, so your students will make mistakes, they will get things wrong, and I will remind them that that is okay, and that is natural, and that it's part of the learning process. Um, and I believe that they will get more comfortable with being wrong as the school year goes on and recognizing it as a step toward being right. Um, it's certainly been my experience in the past from teaching, and I don't see why this year would be any different. That's the student's role in all of this. One more thing I want to say with all of this, with these coaching analogies and everything, is AP Parkway West students sometimes see their classmates as the competition, where they may have gotten an A, but their A is way better if the class average was a B or a C, um, where it's this comparative grading. And I'm going to ask for your help in shifting that mindset a little bit, where I really want to see our class as the team, and we all win together. Uh, my A is good because it means I've learned stuff. It's not good because my friend got a C. Um, we are all in this together. We learn best through helping each other out and through encouraging everyone to be successful. And so that's a main theme for me, is recognizing that my classmates are my team that are helping me rather than the competition. And then similarly, I'm not the referee who's passing out judgment. Sometimes that is a part of my job, but my main role is the coach, the facilitator, and uh, the encourager. 
And so with that in mind, I think we're going to be set up for a really good school year. Last but not least, I want to talk about what is your role, right? I'm reaching out to parents right now in this video. I know you have so much on your plate right now, trying to juggle at least one, maybe two, three, four kids in online learning while trying to figure out your job. Um, I, I can't even imagine what some of you must be going through as far as trying to keep track of everything um, and making sure it all works out. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, so I wanted to make this simple. I have just two points that I want you to do. Number one, support your student. I don't think I'm gonna have any trouble from any of you with that one. It doesn't need to be said, but I still wanted to say, I know you're gonna be supportive of your students. That's what good parents do. Um, number two, I'm gonna ask that you communicate with me. Um, one thing that I will be missing this year, or at least this quarter, is I can usually tell through body language and nonverbal communication how a student is doing that day, right? I can tell if they're having a good day, a bad day, or they just tired because it's the morning or they really drained because something's been going on. Um, in between classes, we can talk about their extracurriculars and maybe they're super busy and I can learn that about them. All of those pieces, I'm going to incorporate them where I can because I value those relationships, but it's a lot harder, if not impossible in a lot of cases through this Zoom online platform. Um, and so, whereas I may respond to how a student is doing with, maybe I don't call on them that day because they need a break, um, or maybe I push them a little bit harder and give them more frequent uh, reinforcement to do some work because I know they can, but um, they're, just not, they're feeling lazy that day. Um, I will miss those nonverbal cues, and you are the ones that are with your uh, students. And so please communicate with me if you notice anything that may affect how they're doing in class, or better yet, encourage your student to reach out to me. Um, because the other thing I want to reassure you is your AP Physics students are taking col a college level class, at least this one, probably multiple, and they are mo most of them are juniors and seniors, there's a few sophomores, but in just a few short years, they will be off to college or career or whatever's next for them, uh, and they will be mo more self-reliant than they ever have been in the past. And so you can trust your student to take care of themselves with this class, um, but at the same time, um, at the same time, it'll, it's still going to be a transition for them. And so uh, encourage them to take on that role for themselves, but also please let me know um, when they are unable to do so. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am really looking forward to this school year. We just finished day one, and I have a feeling, like I said in my welcome video, that while it's going to be a very weird school year and maybe not the ideal, ideal school year, um, I think it's going to be a good experience. I think we're going to learn lots of things and we're going to come out better for it at the other end. Uh, if you need anything from me or if I can answer any more questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. You have my email contact information. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.